oxidation states indicate the general distribution of electrons. Um, another name for oxidation states is oxidation numbers. And of course, this concept is, is covered in general chemistry a lot. I, I'm going to start out with the general chemistry way of assigning oxidation states. And then I'm going to go into a more organic way of assigning oxidation states. And uh, the way that's most useful when you're dealing with organic molecules. And the thing that a lot of people miss about oxidation states is that electronegativity is involved. So I'll show you some examples of that. Other definitions from general chemistry. Um, the concept of oxidation is an increase in the oxidation state of an element. And the other definition that, that's covered a lot in general chemistry is loss of electrons is oxidation. So LEO is the acronym for that. Another definition is reduction. Uh, which is a decrease or a reduction in the oxidation state of something. And GER stands for gain of electrons is reduction. So Leo the Lion goes Gur is one of those things that all general chemistry students have heard of before. Here we have um, a reaction where methane is being combusted and the products uh, are CO2 and water. Let's assign oxidation states using the general chemistry way and we'll see what is oxidized and what is reduced and then we will use the, the organic way uh, to assign oxidation states using the concept of electronegativity and dot structures. So first we'll do it the way that you memorize. Right? You have all these rules for assigning oxidation states and one of those rules is hydrogen is usually plus one. So we'll go ahead and put a plus one oxidation state here for hydrogen. I have four of them, so I'm going to put a total of plus four down here. Another rule for assigning oxidation states is that for a neutral molecule, the, the total has to add up to equal zero. So this should be negative four over here on the carbon side, and I have only one carbon, so carbon's oxidation state is negative four. I move over here to oxygen. I ignore the coefficient. I'm, I'm only focused on the fact that this is O2 here. And one of your rules for assigning oxidation states is for an element in its elemental state, and uh, it has an oxidation state of zero. So oxygen has an oxidation state of zero, which we just memorized. Move over here. Now we have oxygen in a molecule with, with carbon. And in this case, ox oxygen is going to have an oxidation state of negative two. Again, just one of those rules that we memorized. So I have two oxygens, so I get a total of negative four over here, which must mean that this carbon's oxidation state is plus four. I go over here to, to water, and I always start on the right here. So once again, oxygen uh, is going to have an oxidation state of negative two. I only have one of them. And so again, I'm ignoring the coefficients. So my total has to be plus two over here. And this time I actually have two hydrogens. So two hydrogens have to add up to plus two, so each hydrogen is plus one like that. Now when we take a look at what happened to these elements, um, I look at carbon, and I see that carbon went from an oxidation state of negative four to an oxidation state of plus four. So obviously that's an increase in the oxidation state of carbon. So we say that carbon was oxidized. Well, what was reduced? Well, uh, reduction is a decrease or a reduction in the oxidation state. So all I have to do is look at my numbers and see which one went down. Well, oxygen went from an oxidation state of zero to an oxidation state of negative two. So oxygen was reduced um, in this reaction. So that's the general chemistry way of doing it. Let's look at uh, the more organic way of doing it using dot structures and electronegativity. So let's go ahead and draw some dot structures for these molecules. So we start off with methane over here. So methane has a very simple dot structure. And let's go ahead and indicate the electrons in methane. So we have each one of our bonds consists of two electrons like that. Okay, so let's think about which atom is more electronegative. So we have carbon versus hydrogen. And if you remember your trends for electronegativity, carbon is going to be more electronegative than hydrogen. So what we're going to do is treat this like it's an ionic bond, even though it's technically a covalent bond. So if this were an ionic bond, carbon being much more electronegative is going to steal all of those electrons. So let's draw another picture showing carbon stealing all 
of those electrons. So now carbon is going to have a total of eight electrons around it because it is going to steal all of the electrons in those bonds with hydrogen. And hydrogen is going to sit all alone over here, right, with no electrons around it since it's not as electronegative as carbon. So if we were to assign an oxidation state to this carbon, the formula that we would use is we would say, to figure out the oxidation state, we would say, what is the number of valence electrons that are normally um, around an atom? And from that number, we're going to subtract the number of electrons around the atom after we've accounted for electronegativity, after we've thought about the electronegativity of the atoms. So that would be that would be our second picture down here. That would be the one with carbon with eight electrons around it. Well, carbon normally has four valence electrons, so we spent a lot of time talking about that earlier. So carbon has four valence electrons, so let's go ahead and write our oxidation state. So number of electrons minus electrons around the atom. So carbon normally has four. From that number, we're going to subtract the number of electrons around the atom after we count for the electronegativity. Well, that would be these eight electrons right here. So four minus eight is going to give us an oxidation state of negative four for carbon. What about for hydrogen? Well, hydrogen normally has one valence electron around it. And how many electrons around each one of our hydrogens here? Zero, of course. So one minus zero. And this is going to be plus one. So we have an oxidation state of minus four for carbon and an oxidation state of plus one for hydrogen. Let's go up here and let's double check and let's see if that's what we got and when we did it the general chemistry way. And of course it is. We can see our general chemistry way of assigning oxidation states. We got minus four for carbon. We got plus one for hydrogen. Now, you might be thinking this way of assigning oxidation states is very similar to formal charge, and it is. It's extremely similar to formal charge. The only difference is when we're doing oxidation states, we're treating the bonds like ionic bonds. We're accounting for the concept of electronegativity. When we're doing formal charge, we weren't treating them as ionic bonds. We were treating them as covalent bonds, and the electrons are being shared. Let's let's do let's do oxygen. Okay, so we went ahead and took care of these oxidation states over here on on the left. So we got these. Now let's focus in on this one and let's see if we can figure out why oxygen has an oxidation state of zero. So let's draw the dot structure. So here we have the dot structure for oxygen. Okay, and let's go ahead and put our electrons in on our bond as well. So it would look like that. And let's apply the concept of electronegativity. So who gets those electrons between my oxygen atoms? Well, obviously those oxygen atoms have the same electronegativity. So in the tug of war for those electrons, no one wins. And so we'd split the electrons equally. So we have four electrons in those two bonds between my oxygen atoms. So each oxygen is going to get two of those electrons. So when we draw our second picture, we're going to show oxygen like this, right? So now, each oxygen has a total of six electrons around it. And let's look at our definition for assigning oxidation states. The number of valence electrons an atom normally has, well, oxygen will have six. So oxygen's in group six, so oxygen like that. And how many electrons are around the atom after we assign, after we account for electronegativity? Well, each one of these oxygens has six. So six minus six will give you zero. So that's why the oxidation state of oxygen is zero when it's in O2. So let's double check and we can see that this is the exact number we got up here when we did it the general chemistry way. But now we have a little bit uh, of a better idea about where this comes from. Let's do let's do uh, carbon dioxide over here on the right now. So let's do let's do CO2. So we first draw the dot structure for CO2. So carbon dioxide is going to look like this for the dot structure, and we put in our lone pairs of electrons on oxygen like that. All right. Well, I need to draw in my electrons in these bonds. So let's go ahead and do that, and when I draw my second picture here, I'm going to account for electronegativity. So what atom is more electronegative, oxygen or carbon? We saw in previous videos, oxygen is much more electronegative. So in the bonds between oxygen and carbon, oxygen is going to steal all of these electrons because we're going to treat it like it's ionic. So oxygen now has 
four electrons around it over here on the left. The carbon in the center doesn't have any electrons around it because the oxygen on the right is going to steal the electrons over here in the double bond on the right. So this oxygen over here on the right, it had two lone pairs, and it's going to take all four of these electrons from, from these two double bonds right here. So we're going to put in four electrons next to the oxygen since it's more electronegative. Let's apply our definition for oxidation states. Okay, so carbon. So we're going to do this carbon right here. And this carbon has zero electrons around it. Carbon normally has four. So four minus zero will give an oxidation state of plus four for this carbon. What about oxygens? Well, oxygen normally has six valence electrons around it. How many does each oxygen have now? Well, it has two, four, six, eight. So six minus eight gives you a negative two value for the oxidation state. So the oxidation state of carbon should be plus four. The oxidation state of oxygen should be minus two. So let's go over here and look at that. The oxidation state of carbon should be plus four. The oxidation state of oxygen should be minus two. And you can see this matches up with our general chemistry way of assigning oxidation states. So we can, we can confirm that carbon was oxidized and went from an oxidation state of negative 4 to an oxidation state of plus 4. And we can even look at this new way of doing it and think about loss of electrons is oxidation. If we go over here and look at our dot structures, right? carbon over here on the right had 8 electrons around it, and it lost all of those electrons. It was oxidized. And gain of electrons is reduction. So if we look at oxygen over here on the left, it had 6 electrons around it. Over here on the right, it picked up two more, so it was a gain of electrons. And so we've seen now that carbon can go from an oxidation state of minus four to an oxidation state of plus four, and it, it can actually get all the numbers in between as well. So let's go ahead and write out the possible oxidation states for carbon. You could get an oxidation state of minus four, minus three, minus two, minus one, zero, plus one, plus two, plus three and plus four. So we did the two extremes in our example. We showed the oxidation state of carbon going from minus four and being all the way oxidized to an oxidation state of plus four. But all of these values in between are possible. So a total of nine oxidation states for carbon. And for a very simple reaction like this, it might be easier to use the general chemistry way of assigning oxidation states. It's certainly much faster. But as you'll see in the next video, when you're doing more complicated organic chemistry molecules, you need to use the second way, the organic way, drawing dot structures, accounting for electronegativity, and using this formula to figure out the oxidation state of elements.